The ASUS GX701 is the 17-inch version of the Zephyrus S gaming laptop, but just how well does it perform in games? I've benchmarked 17 different games at all setting levels to show you how well it runs and help you decide if it's a laptop you should consider buying. Just quickly before we jump into the benchmark results, I'll cover off the specs in my unit. I've got the GX701GX version here. So there's an Intel i7-8750H CPU, NVIDIA RTX 2080 Max-Q graphics, and 24GB of memory running in dual channel. The GX701 is also available with 2070 or 2060 graphics too, so expect different results with those options. I was running Windows 10 with the latest NVIDIA drivers available, and just as a reminder we're only looking at gaming performance here. If you're new here, get subscribed so you don't miss the full review of the GX701. Battlefield 5 was tested in campaign mode and not in multiplayer mode, as it's easier to consistently reproduce the test run. The purple bars show the results with ray tracing disabled, while the green bars show RTX on. The results with RTX off were great, just able to hit 100 FPS even at Ultra, and RTX on was mostly playable at high and Ultra too, though personally, for a first person shooter, I'd prefer 60 FPS or above. Apex Legends was tested with either all settings at maximum, or all settings at the lowest possible values, as it doesn't have predefined setting levels. Even maxed out, it was playing perfectly fine without any problems, and averaging above 100 FPS. Metro Exodus was tested with a built-in benchmark, which performs worse than actual gameplay, making this more of a synthetic test rather than indicative of actual game performance. Despite this, these results seem quite a bit higher compared to the other 2060 laptops I've tested so far. Far Cry New Dawn was tested with a built-in benchmark as well, and almost 100 FPS was possible at low settings. I haven't tested this game much yet, but at Ultra, we're looking at about 10 FPS more than a 2060 laptop. Far Cry 5 was also tested with the built-in benchmark, and the results were good in terms of average FPS for this test, and around 20 FPS higher at each setting compared to the newer Far Cry New Dawn shown previously. Fortnite was tested with the replay feature, and due to a recent game update, the replay I've used is a fair bit different compared to my previous tests. So these results can't really be compared with my past tests. Even in max settings, well above 100 FPS averages were possible. It was running pretty well. Overwatch was also performing extremely well, and it was tested playing in the practice range. The game has a 300 FPS cap, which was able to be hit at low and medium settings. Even maxed out at epic settings, 200 FPS was possible with a high 1% low as well. Shadow of the Tomb Raider was tested with a built-in benchmark, and the results were very nice for a laptop. I find this game to be more graphically intensive. At highest settings, the average frame rate is about 25% above what I've seen from a 2060 laptop. PUBG was tested using the replay feature, and the results were excellent for this test, with very low settings giving us a high frame rate capable of taking advantage of the 144Hz display while maxed out was still capable of above 100 FPS. CSGO was tested using the Uletical FPS benchmark, and we were seeing some very high frame rates from the GX701, with over 250 FPS averages possible even with all settings at maximum, with almost 100 for the 1% low. Rainbow Six Siege was tested with the built-in benchmark, and is a game I've found to benefit from Nvidia's new Turing architecture. As a result, very high frame rates were possible in this test. Even at Ultra, the 1% low was above the 144Hz refresh rate of the laptop's display. Assassin's Creed Odyssey was another that was tested with a built-in benchmark, and I was seeing some nice results for this test, with almost 60 FPS possible here at very high settings. Dota 2 was tested playing in the middle lane with an average amount of action going on, and even with all settings at maximum, 150 FPS averages were possible. It was running perfectly smoothly with no problems at all. Watch Dogs 2 was a resource-intensive game, However, with our excellent specs here, the results are very good, considering I think it's playable with a solid 30 FPS. There were no problems even playing maxed out at ultra settings. Ghost Recon is another demanding game and was tested using the built-in benchmark, and most laptops that I test aren't able to handle ultra settings in this game. The 2080 Max-Q seems to break this rule though, with 60 FPS averages possible in this test maxed out at ultra settings. The Witcher 3 was also running very well with Hairworks disabled. And once again, even ultra settings were capable of reaching above 100 FPS averages, with much higher possible at lower settings. Shadow of War was tested with the built-in benchmark, and is another game that I've found a benefit from Nvidia's new Turing architecture. The results here were also quite impressive, with over 100 FPS averages possible at ultra settings. 
As we've seen, in all 17 of these games tested, there were absolutely no problems getting high frame rates, even with all settings at maximum. However, it does come at a cost. You can find up to date pricing linked in the description. The 90W 2080 Max Q graphics combined with the i7 8750H and 24GB of memory running in dual channel make a powerful combination in this thin gaming machine. If anything, it makes the 1080p screen seem inadequate. As a 17 inch laptop with these powerful specs, I think it would have made sense to also have a 1440p option available too. Otherwise, you could always attach an external display for those higher resolutions. So how do you guys think the ASUS GX701 gaming laptop did in these games? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments, and get subscribed so you don't miss the full review of the 17 inch ASUS Zephyrus S gaming laptop.